Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're solving Elite Code Problem 2384, Longest Palindromic Number. You are given a string nums consisting of digits only. Return the largest palindromic integer in the form of a string that can be formed using digits taken from num, and it should not contain leading zeros. And there's some notes, you do not need to use all the digits of num, but you must use at least one digit, and the digits can be reordered however you see fit. Okay, so we have this number here, 44497137, and we see that we want to return 744947. Uh, seven, four, 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 okay, how did they actually do that? Well, let's kind of uh, walk through the example and also go through the intuition at the same time, because it makes sense to do this. So to form a palindrome, we know that you know the, the first character needs to match with the last character, and then the next character needs to match with the second and the last character, blah, 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 blah. And you can have just one character in the middle um, on its own, and that's fine, because you can rotate around that axis, and it's still um, mirrored. So obviously, the first thing we need to do is actually build a map which takes each character and however many times it appears, right? So it's count in the string that we're given. So let's do this for our example here. We'll just go over and build this map. So we can see that there are how many fours? One, two, three, four fours. So there are four fours. How many nines are there? There's just one nine. There is two sevens. There is one one. And there are uh, one, there's one three. Okay. So what we want to do is obviously we're told that we want to build the largest number. So we always want to make sure that we're taking the largest number, which has, oops, there's not seven, seven, there's two seven. Sorry about that. Um, we want to always be taking the largest number that has greater than one uh, count. So what we're going to do is let's pretend that this is our result string. So let's just say res. It's going to be some string here. So we're going to iterate over our digits going from nine to zero because we always want to take the largest number first and consider it because we need to learn return the largest palindromic integer. So whatever the largest number that has greater than two count, we basically want to put it at the beginning and the end of our array, however many times it shows up. So if it shows up only twice, we put one at the beginning, one at the end. If it's four times, then it's one, 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 one. Or if it's three times, it could be one, one, and then put it in the middle. So we need to handle that case as well. So for seven, there's only two. So we put one at the beginning and one at the end. The reason we don't do anything with a nine is because um, it only shows up once. So this can actually be our potential center element, which we'll also track as well. And this will just be a nine for now. And the reason we have the center is remember a palindrome, even though if something shows up uh, an odd number of times, that one can actually be in the middle. Um, so that's why we want the largest possible one in the middle uh, that we see. So for now, center will be nine. Okay, so center is nine, uh, res is here. So what's the next largest element we have? So it's actually the fours, and this is an even amount. So we can put um, two in the beginning and two at the end. Cool. We don't have to do anything about the center because it's already nine, so we don't want to do anything there. Uh, then we get to the three, and this shows up once, so obviously we can't put it uh, here or here. We could potentially put it in the center, but because we're trying to maximize the largest palindromic integer, obviously nine is greater than it, so we don't want to do anything with that. Same thing with the one, it wouldn't be greater than nine, so there's no reason to put it because we're trying to get the biggest number. So once we have basically our kind of the start of our array and the end of the array, all we need to do is slap this nine in the middle, add these two bits together, and then we get our final answer, which is four, 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 nine, four, four, seven. And you know, that's essentially what we want to do. We want to just build this mapping, then go over the digits from nine to zero, and basically start organizing our string. We need to keep track of basically the first half. If you see uh, here, the, the first half is the same thing as the second half, except obviously it's been reversed because it's a palindrome. So we don't actually need to track the second bit. All we need to do is the first half of the string plus whatever our potential candidate for the center is. Then at the end, we simply just join this um, starting bit with the center and then reverse the starting bit to get this end bit. And then we just join them together and that's our final solution. So pretty straightforward, a little bit confusing to implement because there's a few edge cases uh, that we have to handle, especially with odds, but really nothing too bad. Let's now go to the code editor and write this one. 
Okay, we are back here in the code editor. Let's type this up. Remember, the first thing we need is that map, which takes each character and its count. So we're going to say digit count is going to equal to collections.counter of our num. Okay, next thing we want is basically a variable which is going to store the first half of the array. So we're going to say first half is going to be an empty list. And we're using a list here because we need to use a string builder instead of uh, trying to concatenate to the end of a string each time. Uh, then we just have something which stores the center value, which is going to be that string that's in the center. And now we need to basically go over the digits from basically nine until zero. We start with nine because we always want to take the biggest possible number we can um, at a time. So we're going to say four digit in range starting from nine going to minus one. And we're going to decrement by one every time. We're going to say that digit, but as a character. So we're going to say digit as a character, um, because obviously our um, keys in the dictionary are strings and not um, numbers. So we're going to say digit char is going to equal to, we're just going to transform it into a string. So we're going to take the digit, cast it to a string. Then we're going to say if we actually have a count for that digit, it's possible that um, we don't. So if we have something to work with, then we need to process it. So we're going to say if um, dig, oops, dig, digit char is actually in uh, digit counts, then we need to do something. So what do we do? Well, we want to get the count. So we want to say the digit count equals to digit counts of digit char. Now what we want to do is basically check whether or not um, there is an even number of this uh, digit or an odd number of this digit. If there's an even number, uh, this makes our life easy. If not, um, then we have to do um, some additional processing here. So the way that we're going to figure this out is basically if uh, this number evenly divides by two. So we're going to and we're going to say that the number of pairs we can get is digit counts modulo two. So if it's even, this will be zero. Uh, if it's odd, then it will not be zero. It will be um, basically one or greater, I guess. Uh, yeah, it won't be zero. So we're going to say if it's odd, then we need to handle that because it kind of makes our life difficult. We can still use all the numbers, but we may need to actually uh, leave one in the middle as the center uh, if we want to do that. So we're going to say if num pairs. So basically, if num pairs, this means that we have an odd number here. We're going to say if not first half, and not digit. So this is the case where actually we don't have any numbers yet and our number is actually a zero. So if not digit will mean that digit is actually a zero. Uh, and remember, we can't actually add this to our um, thing here because we cannot have leading zeros. So because there's no numbers in front of it, we actually cannot put uh, this number in our array. We can basically come back to it um, and potentially leave it as the center if we need something in the center, but we don't want to do anything if it's a zero and we haven't seen any numbers because as the problem uh, stipulates, you should not contain leading zeros. So we basically just want to get rid of whatever the count is of our digit count. And uh, sorry, for that zero, if it's greater than one, uh, we want to just set its count to one so that way it doesn't cause us problems in the future. So we're going to set it equal to one and you'll see later why we do this. So otherwise, um, we have now seen our first number that we can use. So we're going to say first half, um, we're going to append to it the digit uh, as a character, however many times uh, pairs we have, right? So if we had four, then this would obviously um, equal to two here. So, um, yeah, let's see. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this, this won't divide to zero. It will go to, um, uh, an even number. So, okay. Uh, what am I saying? What am I saying? What am I saying? So we want to multiply by the number of times we've seen, uh, num pairs. Okay. Otherwise, what do we need to do? So we also need to check whether or not we want to keep this number as the center. So we're going to say if the digit count modulo two is basically greater than zero. So this is the count. This is the time where we have an odd. Sorry. Um, dividing by two up here is not going to give us equal to zero. It's actually this bit. If the digit count modulo two is not zero, then that means that it's an odd number. 
And we need to make sure uh, that we actually want to take this as a center or not. So the first thing we want to check is whether or not the digit we just used is um, an odd. If it's odd, then we may have taken it uh, to put in the first half, and then we need to decide whether or not we want to put it in the center. So if the center is already defined, then we don't want to take anything. And the reason for this is if center has already been defined, then because we're iterating over the numbers backwards, then whatever number we have will actually have a smaller value uh, than a previously set center. So we don't want to set it. So we're going to say and not center. So if center hasn't been set yet, then we want to say that center equals um, whatever that character is. So we'll do this for all of the digits and we'll basically build our first half and our center. Now we need to be careful uh, of an edge case and that edge case is if the entire string is actually zeros. In this case, our logic here will actually not set anything uh, for our solution. So if both first half is empty and center is still empty because we've only seen zeros, then we need to make sure that we actually just return a single zero. Uh, because remember, we need to use at least uh, one digit. So in the case that everything is zeros, then the longest palindrome we can form is just zero. We're allowed to have just a single zero in that case, because we can't have leading zeros, but we can just have one. So we're going to say if not center and not first half, um, then we want to return uh, zero. So otherwise, we can return our solution. So we're going to say first half as a string is going to equal to just an empty string. We're going to join together the first half because it's a list. So we want to use a string builder here to basically now we're going to make it into a string. And all we have to do is return uh, the first half string plus whatever the center is plus. Uh, actually, we can do this in here. We can do um, let's see, we're going to do uh, result is going to be equal to first half um, oh, sorry. Okay, let's let's clean this up. So at this point, we can basically say, all right. Oh no, we can't do that. Damn. Um, how do we want to do this? Let's see. Okay, so we're gonna return an empty string joining what? We're gonna join the first half. Then we're going to join uh, oh first half plus the center plus uh, first half, but reversed. And we can do the little trick in Python to reverse it, or you can just call the reverse method on it, and it should be fine. Uh, this should, yeah. Okay, so we're going to create a, oops, we don't need to do that. So basically what we do here is we take the first half, we join it to the center, and then we join it with the first half reversed, and then that should give us our answer. Let's see if my little hacky magic thing works on the spot. And wait, what happened here? Digit, oh, fuck, digit count, not digit counts. Okay. Sometimes we do it lot. First half is, oh God, what? Fist half, oh my God. Oy, please work. In this decade? Okay, that, why did that take so long? All right, let's submit it and it is accepted. Okay, cool. Thank you, lead code. Uh, all right, what is the uh, time and space complexity here? So the time complexity Obviously, we need to iterate over the num one time to get the digit counts. And then we basically just need to um, build the palindrome here. There's only nine um, digits we need to work with, but the building the digit counts will actually be the, the hardest part. Plus, we have to then build the, the string builder later, but that's just going to depend on the length of the string. So it's going to be big O of n in the time, where n is the length of the input. Uh, string, same thing. In the end, we're going to have to create this digit counts dictionary and then also some space to actually add these things together. Uh, but again, space complexity wise, just big O of n. Uh, again, where n is the length of the input string. So there you go. That is how you solve this problem. A bit annoying. Um, a lot of these like weird edge cases and things you have to watch out for, but relatively straightforward. Hopefully the video helped you um, figure this one out. If it did, why not leave a like and a comment? Helps me out with the algorithm. Uh, leave a subscription if you want to see more content like this. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.